Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there, and welcome back. Absolutely, welcome back, guys. And, you know, if you never, or maybe you did, wonder, why is it Evolutionary Energy Arts? Well, we're going to talk about energy and how it can definitely affect the evolution of you and everybody on the planet. I saw this tweet here, and it says, Wild, telepathy is real. Our brains have magnetic material that can communicate telepathically with other humans and animals. Trust the vibe you get from someone else. Yes, absolutely. You know, there's an article that's being quoted there in there in that particular tweet. And here right here you can see brain to brain communication, the possible role of brain electromagnetic fields as a potential hypothesis. Some people may already realize that what's been talked of in the East in traditions like the Taoist tradition or in the yogic tradition as well, the fact that chakras, these multi-dimensional vortices that are literally pulling in subatomic energy all the time into our energy field, they literally are gateways to consciousness itself to different densities. They're also feeding all the organ systems of the body. They are charging us with the life force, the the chi, the ki, the prana, the vril. Lots of different names have been used for the life force. We are in this field. Lynn McTaggart wrote a good book called The Field years ago. That's a great place to start. Um, if you're new to all this, we are in this consciousness field or grid that is completely connected and intertwined every being with the other it's again it's quantum entanglement and there there is some truth in science yet there's also a lot of purposeful distortion that happens this though is talking about how you know what's the mechanism and how does this happen can we actually communicate brain to brain well, mind to mind, yes, absolutely. And then the physical structure of the brain is also a fluid called cryptochrome. Not, not the achrome word, no, cryptochrome, which exists in the retina in different regions of the brain, has been confirmed to be able to perceive magnetic fields and convert magnetic fields to action potentials. Recently, iron particles believed to be functioning as magnets have been found in various parts of the brain. We are electromagnetic beings by nature and are postulated as magnetic field receptors, newly developed supersensitive magnetic sensors made of iron magnets that can sense the brain's magnetic field. This is just, you know, it's verification, again, from a scientific point of view, to what we've all taken for granted in many other circles, shamanic circles, in Qigong uh, circles, Reiki circles, uh, in in many different non-traditional Western fundamental circles, we've all known that this exists the whole time. Yeah, I mean, here it, it just talks about... Um the information has been verified between animals and humans, um, but they're they're leaving out so much more that well they haven't you know said anything yet. But when you are out in your garden, or you are out in the forest, or you are even taking a bath, the the water that you're bathing in, um, the trees that you're standing next to. The ground that you're walking on they're all having conversations i think it's just easier for humans when you talk about human to human or animal to human then people can relate but everything around us is having a conversation and i think it's really fun when they come out with this information that talks talks about stuff that we've always known now as far as like who has this information or who has more of this stuff and who doesn't, I really think that people 
who uh, channel certain ways have more or there's more in the lineage or there's more to be called upon than than other people so I think it can be very very sensitive and I also think people who live together for a very long period of time and definitely married couples family members um, twins is probably a big one then you start getting into you know how this works in relationships where people sort of start to become each other you know because they're around so much they start reading and doing and um, pretty soon they're they're sensing and they can really literally uh, finish each other's sentences or maybe even possibly hear one hollering for another one in a room but really it's it's in the mind so it it is a really fascinating subject and the other thing that i i really love is the energy that's outside of our bodies just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not the most important force that you carry with you wherever you go everywhere you go it interacts with the people that you interact with it's a silent messenger it's always listening and when we go through traumas this energetic force can really get disrupted and when that gets disrupted and we don't deal with it and we don't uh, figure it out and repattern it back to its natural pattern this is where things can start happening to the body so the body starts to get affected so it's really fascinating stuff i love to see like sciencey things come out about it even though i already know about it it's just fun to see what other people have to say yeah absolutely and again uh, there are machines that can take photographs of your energy field that's a scientific reality uh, we can see where the chakras are because they are going to show up as more intense lights uh, giving off a higher frequency you know this is this is all what has been again in yogic and in Taoist circles understood and known for thousands of years um, yet to the west in many people still don't understand that this is very very true science so you know this is just the how and why the other thing that's interesting about the cryptochromes is how they relate to the uh, circadian r clock and rhythm and again in our society it's so distorted and unnatural in so many ways that we don't even perceive it as being so Typically in nature, you know, again, you're going to lay down when you're tired. You might take a nap during the day uh, if that's if that's an option. But going to sleep when it gets dark and rising when the sun comes up is kind of a natural thing. You, you'll see people working on farms doing this. They'll get up and maybe, you know, get out there even an hour right before the sun's coming up. We're usually up at like 5 a.m. and, you know, you can sense you could just sense, uh, for those that are like us, you, you can sense when the sun's coming up. You could sense uh, the sounds of nature around you, listening to the, the frogs, the insects, the birds, everything. You know, they all know exactly what time it is in the middle of the night. They just know automatically what time it is. Because they're all in communication and also what Cindy was alluding to, it's not just human to human or human to animal, but yeah, human and plants as well, animal and plants. You know, there was this famous study done that showed that one uh, scientist would come in and would intentionally harm a plant every day and they hooked up electrodes to the plant. And every day he might come in and pluck a leaf and burn the leaf in front of it. The, the electrodes showed that the plant could distinguish one scientist from another. And the one that was torturing the plant, when it saw, when, when the person's field, because again, plants will see differently than we do, but when it sensed that being, it reacted with abject fear because it has emotions. So I saw in Rumble there was, a comment where somebody said how could anybody possibly know if animals have souls and my correspondence was back 
how could you possibly think animals don't have souls? Because that to me is just mind boggling. But it's the system in which we are brought up in, you know, feel into things, learn how to feel into energy and and the whole world will change for you. It's never too late. There again, the system keeps us drugged up, dumbed up and medicated to the point where it is seriously trying to eliminate these abilities from ever developing in, in as many people as possible. Because if people are uh, telepathic and clairvoyant and empathetic, they're not going to be as willing to go march off to war and kill somebody else that has nothing to do with you in the first place. And they're going to feel and sense into things and just know things. You'll even know clearly when the leaders are lying, which is really pretty easy now. And I think probably everybody that's listening to us that are regular subscribers, you know right when they're lying automatically because you're to that point on the evolutionary ladder where you pick up the changes in people. You know, of course, um, I've in one job I had at one point in time, you had to pass lie detector tests. Well, again, that's just picking up body signals. Is there a change in respiration? Is there a change in heartbeat? We, we could feel and sense the same thing without needing any sort of sensors. Everything about the system is basically an artificial reconstructuring of what happens naturally. They really do. They just try to uh, recreate in an artificial way and then they patent it so they could make money off of it and and be the ticks and leeches that they are and and leech off of everybody else's efforts and work the, they're parasitic in nature are are every every bit about the structure of the planet the control structure is completely parasitic in nature and dr holda clark did a book um it's called the cure for all diseases and you know in her mind everything is parasites and we were just talking about that with a friend um, who is also a Qigong uh, student and is, is very advanced in their abilities. And again, it, it, it just takes some dedication. But what, what we're looking at here with you know, your natural body rhythms is you'll find that these cryptochromes are flavin-containing flavin blue light photoreceptors present in most kingdoms including bacteria, plants, animals, fun fungus as well. And many of us know uh, that the blue lights that you see on computers and stuff can be harmful uh, to your sleep circuit. And again, not just that, but the EMFs coming off are, are definitely disruptive to our energy circuits, the lights, the, the lights that we're forced to get now, the LED lights, there's a reason why they're forcing us to get them because they're disrupting us. They are they're more, um, what's a good word for them, irritating to our system. Everything about this system that we're living in is irritating intentionally to our systems. And it's all in an effort to keep us from being fully human because... When we're outside of, again, the Kali Yuga, we're extraordinary. We are extraordinary. And here you have another scientific article. You know, This is, again, from NIH. Detection of extraordinarily large biomagnetic field strength from human hand during external chi emission. What does that mean? This is something that when they tested average people, average people that have never practiced Qigong, for instance, they emit very low field uh, strength frequencies compared to when you test somebody that's been practicing Reiki or Qigong or pranic, pranic healing or forms of yoga where they're actually using their mind to gather the life force and to send it out to somebody or something. And when you see the amount of increase in strength, like a thousand times at least, a thousand times stronger than the average person, somebody that is trained in Qigong, a thousand times is 
more than considerable. That's freaking amazing. But that is exactly just showing human potential. Most people are not living even remotely up to their potential. In fact, in Qigong, we have something called the Wei Qi field, and that is the key to our, our health. And when our Wei Qi, and Wei just simply means external, external life force uh, field, which you could think of it in terms of our shields. When our shields are up, things can't get in. And so when we have a strong biomagnetism to us through things like yoga and qigong and, and still meditation, we, we do poor breathing all the time. You don't have to move at all. Poor breathing is something we do when we're uh, f first going to sleep and we stop moving, we focus on, well, I usually focus on the pineal, and then I start to focus on the entirety of the body. And every inhale, I just know I'm bringing in life force energy. And I can feel it penetrating all my chakras and every pore in on my skin. And I draw it into my field, and on the exhale, I see my whole body glow. It's just a visualization. You don't have to use any particular color. If you are sick uh, and, and have felt feeble, seeing it as a brilliant, uh, vibrant green could be very, very healthy. It's also very safe just to see it as a crystalline white. If you are uh, in a period of agi agitation or if you are in a lot of pain, you could see it more like a sky blue and that would have a tendency to to dull the pain and and to also make you relax again and then if you are feeling very very low frequency you might see it as a magenta or towards a violet and that could raise you up into a more positive higher frequency mm -hmm. I, um, people really underestimate a lot only because we haven't been taught our energy field and how that affects us just going through day-to-day -day life how it affects us when we go to the bank how it affects us when we even do things like our taxes how it affects us when we write a letter to someone um they they don't think uh to see how it how it affects us when we're writing an email to someone but whatever you are focused on whatever is in your energy field you are going to transfer that information and some people happen to just have extra of this energy mostly from past lives but also from the mind body breath work that they do in this life it's it's something that it's not going to happen overnight but it's something that definitely builds if you give it time now some people have so much trauma in their energy field and you can feel it you know you can feel if uh, somebody walks into a room and you get an instant impression, let's say, you know, your your heart speeds up or you feel like you got slugged in your gut, that person is probably going through a lot of trauma. They are most likely not aware of it, but you can feel it. You can feel it. And I think people confuse that most of the time when they feel something like that. They're looking for something going on in their own life. It's like, oh, where did that anxiety come from? It must have come from me. Or you could be walking down, you know, in a, in a hallway and just all of a sudden get all this anxiety. Well, you probably ran into an energy field where somebody else got very, very frightened or two people were standing there having an argument and they just spew this energy out there and you walk into it like a cloud of guck and now it's got you. Uh, one, one thing we talk a lot about on this channel and one thing I do religiously when we work on people is sage sage before during after before during after it, it's no different than washing your hands the cleansing the intention and the energy that you input to to anyone that you're going to encounter really makes a huge difference in how things are going to to work out you know if we if we all just sat and spent a little more time visualizing things in this world like how do we want something to go in a conversation or or how how should i approach this person when you know so you're going to go look at a house what do you want that to look like what do you want it to feel like we have the ability to do this programming and when you do the mind body breath work oh my gosh 
it can be just amazing and the miracles that can happen through just visualization when we strengthen our energy field that's what the controllers are so afraid of and this is what we are really trying to get out there and teach people more and more and more about is you have power you have a lot of it and just because you can't see it really doesn't mean it's there it means it's so powerful very powerful and you can build and build and build on it yeah absolutely so a lot of it is as cindy was saying past life but again it's it's never too late to start and start building you don't you don't know i mean it could be that it is part of your past life that you've already done this chances are if you're a regular on this channel you're you are familiar with it i'm sure in one life or another so here we see an emission of extremely strong magnetic fields from the head and the whole body during oriental breathing exercises. Many of you are probably familiar with Wim Hof, who has used breathing techniques, and he has his own patented breathing method um, in order to withstand temperatures, for instance, that we normally cannot withstand. And he's done things that scientists would say are impossible. But then again, there's been yogis that have been monitored not drinking or eating, but not drinking as well for weeks. Like three, uh, one was monitored twice uh, for over three week periods with no intake of water and was perfectly fine. Science will say, you know, you'll die of thirst, but no. He simply was absorbing it through his skin, through what was in the air. Uh, we can do a lot of things, and it's really all about belief when you get down to it. So here again, uh, they were testing how, how much the field could affect a needle and a compass. And it was concluded that traditional oriental qigong breathing appears to stimulate an unusually large bio-magnetic field emission so again our consciousness and learning a few techniques which are very very simple can do amazing things yeah, this is the microcosmic orbit and you can see you know not to go and turn this into a whole lesson on qigong um, but again the microcosmic orbit is a combination of running energy through the functional channel and the governing channel also called vessels which done in one direction yeah you could reverse the flow as well they're kind of a yin and a yang flow one is a building and the other one is a cooling everything that you'll discover when you study uh traditional chinese medicine Taoist philosophy it's all about balance it really is about balance build but make sure you build in a balanced even way and we've talked about kundalini and the powers that are associated with kundalini but also the fact that it could short circuit people and i do think that when my kundalini rose uh it was because i was practicing qigong already for a long time that i was able to just circulate the energy and keep from having any real problems because it's very common for people to have all sorts of health problems develop if you do it in a way that's not governed and not um, not not taken in in short increments and and at a, a smooth even pace and you have to understand too how to uh, balance out these energies and what you need to do because yeah at one point in time it I, I was raising the energy up so much it was starting to literally cause uh, heart palpitations, fluctuations, and uh, irregular heartbeat, but it was through using what we call silk reeling techniques that I was able to smooth that out and then draw the energy up higher. Uh, and again, this is stuff that I've been practicing since uh, my 20s, really, and, and became aware of in, in my like 12 and 13 is when I, I really became aware of the energy and uh, learned about things initially like pranic healing and how cultivating the energy here can help bring about those things that they're talking about as far as telepathy, clairvoyance, and just heightened sense awareness of a much higher degree. 
the thing that's happening now though is the sun is triggering this evolution on all of us on the planet so we're even going to higher levels and those that have been turned off will find that you know they're starting to be turned on and that could be disconcerting when all of a sudden you start to perceive things that you never perceived before you might think you're going crazy but no it's it's probably part of the evolutionary cycle very very important to be um on it on a healing path because i mean mike he had a, a good even experience i had an absolutely crazy slash horrible slash insane experience to the point where i'm just so careful i try to be so careful with people when we do energy work when you raise somebody's vibration and you bring them up in consciousness they have to be on a healing path or ready to step onto that healing path because it's like their higher self and their energies are not going to allow them to sit in that lower frequency. So whatever might be holding you in a lower frequency, you're going to feel that, you know, and I, I was, I was coming out of a place of trauma and mine just snapped. I mean, it just came on. So there wasn't a lot of to do anything. And, and, and that happens, that happens to people. I really had to scramble and do my absolute best to get myself in alignment because it's like my body was not was not waiting and my body was not giving me any breaks at all it's like no you got to figure this out right here right now so it can be very very stressful um if if things just trigger and you're not doing a mind body breath at that time um so this is something to take very seriously and you want to do it slowly but surely and you want to be on a healing path and hopefully you're in touch with somebody that that kind of knows the ropes and knows what's going on and knows um what you can expect because you're not going to get any of this information from some type of a therapist or a western medicine doctor in fact they're waiting with their little white pieces of paper and and their notes to just write down things that they think are going on with you when in reality it could be a rising in consciousness or kundalini awakening you're going through and doctors have a heyday with that because they can run a bunch of tests but they're not going to find anything wrong they're just going to keep saying no there's nothing wrong with you there's nothing wrong with you and all along it's your energy your energy is trying to expand but it's getting hung up on these little traumas that you might have whether it be physically or emotionally so right now is a very challenging time for people the idea that the controllers keep us in a state of trauma that's to keep us down that's to keep us lower that's to keep us from from going up but um it, it's happening whether they like it or not and it's to me it's just the best thing to do is just go along to get along with your body with your body if your body is asking something do everything in your power to do what it takes to get it better because if it's an energetic thing and it's a, like a knock knock knocking at the energetic door it's not going to go away until you find a resolution and sometimes that is very difficult very challenging and can be scary Absolutely. So again, the Wei Qi is a protective energy field which emanates from the body, guarding it from external pathogens, emotional, climatic, electromagnetic invasion. Uh, even and when they say electromagnetic invasion, that that includes things like demonic entities. It does. Uh, you know, Cindy and I. I mean, we we have cleared thousands of demons, <laughs> literally thousands and thousands um as for 10 over 10 years now you know this has been part of my everyday life and last five it's been part of mine and cindy's every day every day i mean whenever i see her sometimes like if we're not communicating i'll see her all of a sudden she's grabbing uh her chakra wand which she basically made her a wand out of different stones um, that are are simulating the chakras, the main chakras, and she's running through clearing somebody's energy field. Um, so you know th this is just what we do all day, every day, uh, 24/7, 365. You know, we make videos when we have a chance, uh, and then we help people with regular appointments. 
Um, so that's that's really what we do, and we we are absolutely um, energy workers first and foremost, and then teachers as well. So Wei Qi stems from the deep in, inner Qi, the meridians, the heart, the Dantians. There's there's three main Dantians, which are kind of energy reservoirs. And then you have uh, these channels besides those that, that the life force is stored in. And just like you have veins and arteries, you have the equivalent uh, that are of an energetic, non-physical nature, but very tangible. And the reality is we can change our energy bodies quicker than our physical body. And the changes that we make in the energy body do end up correspond and come in to the physical body over time. So how how can the wave chi field be damaged? Well, look to the system. They they know what they're doing. Everything about the system is damaging your wave chi field. Poor food, GMOs, sugars, refined foods, toxic and additives. Um, poor lifestyle habits. Absolutely, you know, being too sedentary is is definitely one of them emotional stress fear anger grief worry guilt blame negative home environment or contact with negative people this is again where you really got to make decisions on what's important to you is a hundred thousand dollar salary the most important thing or would you rather have optimal health and well-being because these things sometimes they'll come together, you know, for people, but often you have to make a change in order to get to the point where you can be in an environment that's going to be healthy. Because, you know, again, you can be doing the best you can do for yourself, but then you go into work and you're just you're surrounded by toxic people, toxic corporate bureaucracy. It got to me uh, where. I loved my actual work with people, but I hated the corporation, and I really don't hate much, but boy, I hated the corporations. I just, they're, they're soulless entities, and they're life-sucking, and when I saw the lack of uh, care, really, for people in, in the business where it's all about caring, and all they were concerned about was profits, it, it just got to the point where it was physically hurting me to be in that environment so you know then it was time to move on so negative home or work environment absolutely distraction or lack of focus dullness or depression low self-esteem lack of self-work lack of self-worth lack of exercise lack of fresh air i mean if you're working 12 hours a day in an office building or if you're leaving that office building and you're in a city that is loaded with pollutants like there's just no way for somebody to be healthy truly healthy and vibrant in the middle of new york city la dc it's just not going to happen you're not going to be your best self if if that's really what you want again this is where we have to make those decisions could you work remotely, perhaps, and instead? Is there an option for remote? Can you, If that's the case, then can you get to a place where the air is cleaner and healthier and the water is better? Uh, and then, of course, it goes on down into alcohol, drugs, and smoking. Yeah, absolutely. All those things will damage the way Chi field as well as negative emotions. You know, one that really is a, a stinker is, is mold. You know, if you've been exposed to mold or if you have mold in your house, that I, I really didn't understand how nasty that that stuff could be and, until I had my own experience and started to put it together. But that stuff can really damage your field as well. So you want to make sure that you have air cleaners going. If, if there's a mold issue in your house, you want to get somebody in there and, and, and remedy that and, and take care of that. And a, a lot of times they have to do work or it could be up in the in the ducts, you know, in your AC um, where the air comes through in your home. But you want to keep an eye on that one, too. It's a stinker and um, it's just it's silent, but it's it's a bad one. You know, in the world that we live in, always being on some type of a detox you know it, with me i just i'm constantly drinking lemon water that's my thing i just drink lemon water i like it now it's almost like a it's like a it's like my drink you know it's a slushy kind of thing <laughs> it grows down you like mold 
over time. Um, but there's a lot of things that can really damage that field and we should be always actively doing what we can to rebuild it with some type of mind, body, breath, taking care of our temple, taking care of our body, you know, cultivating that good uh, energy to to bring about uh, a sense of peace. And um, it can really be life changing when you get into something like this or say you've always been sensitive, but you start to pay closer attention you know, it's, it's somebody's talking to you. Somebody's trying to say, Hey, you know, it's time we get on our path and figure out what this stuff is about. Absolutely. So how does Qigong help build protective Wei Qi? Be, you're using intention uh, to draw the life force into your body and you use intention to, to store it and to absorb it. And it's just amazing what will happen. It'll create new synapses, nerve pathways, makes the senses keen, strong, flexible at the same time. It tunes the energy systems, awakens the body's innate intelligence. And you will develop greater sensitivity uh, to different energy fields. You'll be able to distinguish uh, what is what clearer. And again, we, we do have um, a full playlist over there. Uh, in here you have a short qigong program and that's about 27 minutes and then a full class that i, I used to teach on a regular basis uh, that was down in florida um, it's now over an hour but you don't have to do the whole thing uh, the first 20 minutes is is pretty equivalent to the short program and it's it's what you need to do, in, and especially in this world, is clean stagnant cheese. So what we call purgation. You purge. You purge and shake up the stagnant energy fields. Then you do a circulation, and then we can build. Uh, there's other in here. There's other videos uh, that are, I think, very going to be very, very helpful for so many people. As you can see, you know, there's a couple thousand views of each, but I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, wow, what a what a game changer, uh, you know, this has been for me. The people that actually do uh, adapt these pra practices, they will totally change your life. They'll completely change your perception, and it's just a matter of sticking to it. You know, you have to be dedicated to it. And again, if you're going out to the bars and, you know, still smoking two packs of cigarettes a day, you know, those type of things are, are going to be hard to overcome, even with adapting a practice like this. So you really, really need to uh, start to get more and more on that healthy path. But again, the, the bulk of you guys are. And of course, the regulars, I, I know a lot of you guys, I'm preaching to the choir, you already understand this. Uh, there's there's a lot of things that you know once once uh you get the calling and it's just going to keep calling until you answer <laughs> until you say okay i hear you um you'll kind of notice that things might be not as tolerable so if higher self if higher self is trying to tell you okay this relationship is not good for you or this thing is not good for you it's going to become more of a problem in your life and that's why it's important to be on a healing path to have uh, coping coping skills you know to to get past these things and you, not to just tolerate them but fix them you know fix them a lot of people are probably in situations in their lives and they just you know it hurts and it's an awful thing but they just grind through it and, and no, no, when you get that calling and you're supposed to be connecting to higher self, you have to look at those things in your life, you identify them, and you work through them. You, you don't just force yourself to deal with them. And that's really difficult in this world and the positions that they put us in. Um, and then we're expected to just sit and put up with it. And that's not how life should be. It's not how life has to be. We can put ourselves in a position that makes us happy and full of joy and at peace. Absolutely. So please do uh, check out some of these videos if you haven't. There's 56 of them up there. Uh, this one, how meditation changes the brain and expands our consciousness. It's exactly what we're talking about. It literally restructures. It opens up new neural pathways. 
you have so much of your innate abilities that have been turned off by the system that you can simply turn back on yourself if you just simply develop a regular meditative practice. And, and really, I think it's so undervalued, the power of breathing. Just consciously breathing is, and, and becoming aware of your breathing patterns. It could change everything and it could really sharpen uh, your mind to a, a very high degree. You know, oxygen, it's the first thing that we take in that animates our body and it's the last thing that leaves our body when we're done. So it's breathing. <laughs> it's, it's everything. Absolutely. And so, again, if you guys are interested, we don't really advertise much because we quickly get overwhelmed <laughs> with, um, you know, so many people. That's why we, we, we already have like a regular clientele um, that keep us pretty busy, but we will take on uh, a, a few people that we can manage uh, in, in small increments. And this is, again, why we don't really advertise per se, but you can reach us for an appointment. It's evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com. Again, evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com. And typically a couple weeks to get you uh, on the schedule. Uh, we could do an energy clearing, just a simple energy clearing uh, with not so much talking uh, and coaching. And it r literally will take us probably 10 to 15 minutes to run through um, the chakras. And then we could go deeper with longer sessions. But if you just needed uh, a quick boost and clearing, which is the case with many, many people, uh, could take as little as 10 to 15 minutes. And, you know, again, we, we do do coaching on a regular basis, too. We have many people that we talk to every every other week is the most common um, with many. And then some people once a month and other people just whenever they need to. So, and then of course, Cindy does her Vedic astrology as well. And again, we don't always advertise it because we quickly get... Uh, behind the eight ball with keeping up and we've been doing so much with uh, trying to build a homestead uh, that's another reason why we haven't mentioned it so much but we're getting closer we are getting closer we got a few more raised beds we're putting up and then we'll we'll show you guys some of the things that we're we're doing um, it's just amazing what the power of intention and proper conscious breathing can do this is definitely a time of miracles, and that's one of the things that the guides want uh, us to get across to you. Uh, expect miracles at this time, because again, if we were out of the system, y your mind would be blown with how good things would be heading and, and what direction they would be heading in. Every, everybody would be like, wow, things are really getting good. Mm -hmm. It's just the system is in the way. That's the only thing. It's true, and it's how, like, how do you identify those things that are in the system? It's just, it can be a little bit tricky. Absolutely. As always, source bless and namaste. Namaste.